Let him turn broadside. It all started here, 20 years ago. Elk hold a special spot in my heart. It's something that I've pursued and chased after my whole life. This life has been filled with really high highs and really low lows. I lost everything and ended up guiding. And that led me to my wife. I've almost died over the last 20 years two different times. Yet I'm still here. These pictures are a look back at some amazing moments. A lot of happy clients, a lot of happy friends. I didn't get time a lot with my brother over those years. But I learned a lot. I learned about people. I learned about love. I learned that there's a lot more to life than just hunting. And somewhere along it all I found Jesus. And then I started hunting with my brother again. I gave up an opportunity to hunt some of the largest elk that walk the face of this earth in order to be a part of growing Jesus' church. And I never thought I'd get an opportunity to a giant bull again. And this hunt is a story of how God redeemed the time and how when I gave him my life, he gave me the desires of my heart. We hope you all enjoy this video as much as we enjoyed making it. It is day three of season. Brent killed his bull yesterday. Now I've got the rifle. We had a plan this morning, kind of. I wasn't completely solid on it. I was just laying there and thinking and praying and thinking this is the way I'm meant to go. It's hard to explain it, but it just is what it is. So we're gonna go up over this way, head into some country that I've hunted a little bit, not much, but we've been hitting these hills pretty hard and there's not a lot of bulls running around. Justin and Brian bumped into a few, but I think there's another spot that I can find some elk. So we're gonna go there. We're gonna see what happens. Either way, be a good day. Brent and I spent this entire day timber pounding, getting stuck under snags and just looking over every single branch and twig for an elk moving in the timber. I ended up finding a few bulls, but nothing that I was really hoping to shoot. Then the days started ticking by. Day four of season hit, day five of season, day six of season, day seven of season. We ran into countless elk, but again, nothing that I was really looking for. I was holding out for a true monster on this trip. 
Don't walk out. When day five hits, you know you're past the halfway point. And these health gave us a slip, even though we had them dead to rights. It's just one of those things where you zig when they zag, and it gets frustrating, it gets exhausting. But you know you can't give up, because any day it could all come together. You have to look at it with a little bit of hope and a lot of perseverance. He's, he's sparring right now with this bike. Day six met us with an incredible snowstorm on our hunt. I ended up giving up on the hunt and heading down to go packing Brenton's bowl back to camp while Brenton went back and warmed up the tent. Carnivorous Mindy. We like our horses to eat what we eat. Therefore, they eat elk meat. All loaded up. It is a nasty, nasty day. Can't see anything. There's a whole blizzard today. So I'm packing Brenton's bowl out. There's Hootie over there. Got the full bowl right there. Got Mindy loaded and Merida. Pretty awesome. Real awesome. <sighs> Gotta get to packing. All right, I am extremely proud of these guys. I couldn't film what I just did. But these guys just packed up the most insane trail that I have ever gone on. It was very steep and they did awesome. Absolutely awesome. I'm about to go through trees though, so I gotta go. A little cold. Yeah, no kidding. Just mildly frozen. <laughs> I got the fire going in here. Huh? I got it going warm in here. Good. We're gonna need it. We're gonna need to get these guys some food and turn them loose. Okay. Get the meat off of them. Yep. Oh. We're in just an absolute wide out blizzard right now. It wasn't even supposed to be snowing currently. Elk tracks cutting across this park right over here. Going out that way. So hopefully we'll find the elk out that way. Brent and I found a large herd of elk out in this space, so we started a fire and bundled up underneath the tree while we glassed, hoping that at any moment a big bull would pop out. That moment never came, so we gathered up our gear and started hiking out the ridge to get a closer look and hopefully jump a bull. It turned out this herd was what we like to call a nursery. Nothing but small raghorns and spikes running with a bunch of cows. All the big bulls seemed to have pulled off. But we did find this giant buck and it made us wish we had a tag in our pocket. With that, it wrapped up day seven and we headed back to camp with a new plan. All right, Brenton. Look at that. All the goodness in there. Elk, cheese. Eggs, bacon, sausage. Yeah. Is it good? We should have done this a long time ago. I bet. Oh, it was so good. Looks good. You better eat some. I'm going to. With a delicious breakfast in our belly, we broke camp and headed out. We had a new idea on how to find elk. Unfortunately, this plan required us to lose a day of hunting, and we were keeping our fingers crossed that it was gonna be worth it. And it paid off big time. When we looked eight miles back where I kept going on day three and five, and found this bull in with all of his cows. That one right there. Look at this thing. He's like twice the size of all the other ones. Brent and I marked the location of this herd on base map 
and headed into town for a hot meal and a hot shower. It was well deserved after eight days out there. The next morning, we got a late start. We forgot it was daylight savings time. Luckily for us, these elk weren't in a rush to get out of this basin, and we popped out right on top of them. You want him? No, hold on. I got a bunch of limbs. He's got to go about 30 yards so I can get him. Just don't worry, bro. We're good. Just breathe. I'm going to move up just a little bit so he's here on the Broadside. Kill him. He stops. Oh, that's Hit him. Hit him again. Hit him again. Hold on. Okay, good. Smoked him, dude. He jumped him. Dude, dude. he's a giant! He oh dead. my god! You just killed a giant. Bro. You just killed an absolute stud. Thank bro. you, God! You just killed like a 350 inch bull. Dude, at least. Oh my gosh! Yeah! Ah! Where is he? Hey, where is he? Oh. 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 He's laying right there on the hill, dude. He is done. Oh. Dude, he's done. Oh. Brother. Dude, we have struggled so long. Dude, we have struggled so hard. Bro, I love you, buddy. I love you, man. I love you. Dude, heck of a shot, buddy. You just killed an absolute giant, bud. That's the biggest bull elk I've ever seen in my life. Oh my gosh. Oh, thank you, Lord. Dude. Dude, I did not know if it was gonna happen. 
I know, buddy. I was starting to doubt it too. Last day, man. We've been grinding all season. Okay, I don't know about you, but I'm getting over that. Come on, dude. Hold on, hold on. Come on, come on. Hold on. I got it. Just give me a minute. My, your back. Oh, I need my backpack. <laughs> my adrenaline. Dude, the flipping your refrain now. Dude, that is the biggest bull elk I've ever seen in my life. Oh my god. Oh my gosh, Justin's gonna freak. Yeah, he is. You told him you weren't shooting nothing but a masher. You told him. It's Lord. Dude, look at all those elk. Hold on, look at all those elk. Oh my god. Dude, massive. Oh my god. Bro. What? What did you god. kill? Oh my. Oh. What did you just kill? Colton. <laughs> what did you just do? Bro. And he's missing the tail end of his main beam. Oh Bro. my gosh. Colton. That thing is insane. Oh my gosh. Colton. Dude, I'm shaking and I didn't even shoot it. Oh, I don't even want to touch him yet. Bro. Dude. Oh, that is a tank. Buddy. That bull was something else. <gasps> Dude, you can't even see. You can't even see half of them. That side. I know, pick him up. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it. Do a Shane. For Shane. Gotta get the gun in there for Shane. Pick him up, dude. Oh my gosh. Oh. What an animal. Bro. That's the biggest bull elk I've ever seen anywhere. I have guided for years. I have hunted for years. I've hunted hard this year in particular. I I hunted hard for my sheep, I hunted hard for elk, moose, everything. This bull, even with the broken off tail end, this is the most incredible animal I have ever personally laid eyes on or taken. This is absolutely incredible. I'm blown away. We have hunted all the way through season. This is the last day, the last morning of the hunt. I spotted this thing from probably eight miles away with this herd. <laughs> and we came in here this morning. Didn't realize it was daylight savings time's la saving time last night. And I thought we were late. I thought we were gonna miss him. And this thing was just screaming up here. He was screaming his head off. This is an incredible animal. God created an incredible, incredible world with incredible animals that we get to chase. And even though this is just one of the biggest highlights of my life right here, this is nothing compared to Jesus. I wouldn't die for this bull. Brent mentioned that on his elk. I wouldn't die for this bull. I'd hunt hard for it. I wouldn't die for it. I'd chase after it. 
I wouldn't die for it. Jesus died for us. There's very, very, very few people in your life that you'd die for. This animal is incredible, but the whole reason we do what we do is to tell you about Jesus. Nothing else. We love hunting. We enjoy it. But our passion and our heart is for Jesus because he changed our lives. We were going one direction and it was hard and hopeless. Then one day everything changed. You get hope for a future. And even through setbacks, like this week, this bull we were watching, a really great bull we were watching got shot before we could get to it. And through all that, through all the struggle, we just kept going. We kept putting in the days. And God gave us this opportunity. He gives you an opportunity to know him. Take it. It's free. Right now, we're just going to enjoy this bowl. Enjoy what God made and gave to us. This wasn't my doing. I was just here the other day. This elk wasn't here. This isn't my doing. I was just the guy that kept on going. Same with Brenton. Couldn't have done it without him. <laughs> Love you, bro. Love you too, man. Wouldn't miss this for the world, buddy. We got our work cut out for us. I'm mounting this thing, so we got a whole cave. We're gonna have to walk out of here. Sorry. Hey. <laughs> I've walked a lot further. <laughs> this is an easy walk compared to where we have been, bud. It was awesome. to be moments in life that you feel you're going backwards that you feel that every single thing that you do is in vain you're going to make choices you're going to give up things that you really don't want to give up but it only lasts a moment it might be a day it might be a week it might be a month it might be a year or years later but I promise you that after seeing God's hand in my life and how he works things for good every time don't give up keep pushing forward you are in his plan If you'd like to learn what a walk with Jesus looks like or to grow your walk deeper, head to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com and request a copy of The First Mile. It's a discipleship resource that we wrote 
that'll teach you who Jesus is, why you need a relationship with him, and how to actually walk that out in your life. And it is completely free to you. Head over to our website, www.limitlesshunting.com and request your copy of The First Mile. Thank you all again for watching, and we'll see you again next time in God's Limitless Outdoors.